My friends, how you doing today? It is another mass video. Yes. Oh, you're so excited. It's the beginning of a new adventure. <laughs> and look at this. We have ourselves a feature animal of the day. It's Mr. Kangaroo. I don't believe we've had you as a feature animal before. Yeah. Okay, well, Mr. Kangaroo, you're like staring right at me. You know, you're making me kind of nervous. <laughs> Anywho, hey, let's get started. That is why we are here. We are here to do math, my friends. Let's go ahead and take a look at our lesson today. It's lesson 8.3. And look at our topic. We are going to be connecting the idea of fractions to division. That is our topic of today's lesson. Essential question, our learning target is how does a fraction represent division? Yes, I like that they put it right out there. We know exactly what it is that we're going to learn. This is what we are responsible for. Anyway, first it says connect. It says a fraction can be written as a division problem. Look what we have there. We have three quarters, which most of us, when we think of three quarters, we think of, yeah, 75 cents, right? Some money. But three quarters is almost a whole, not quite. But look, at it's equal to just three divided by four. And this is important. When you express a division problem, 12 divided by 2, we can write it as 12 over 2. Okay, all right, I like that we have to connect. But you know now, it's time for Unlock the Problem. That's right, my friends, it's real world, baby. Real world problem, my friends. Real world. There are three students in a crafts class and two sheets of construction paper for them to share equally. What part of the construction paper will each student get? Mm, that is a great question. Okay, and it says to use a drawing. And our kangaroo guy, though, I don't even know if you have a name. But, uh, oh, you do. Nice to meet you there, Kanga. Why does that name sound familiar? Woohoo, like Winnie the Pooh, maybe? Kanga, yeah. Okay, we're just going to shrink you down a little bit. No offense. Okay, it says to circle the dividend. So let's go ahead and circle the dividend. And the dividend here, even though that first number comes first, you may think that it's three students. But remember, it dividend talks about it's the part that's being divided. And that, my friends, is the two sheets of construction paper. So I'm just going to circle the number two. And can I also do that? Just because I want to, it would be kind of fun to draw my ear. I need practice there. Yeah. And then it says to underline the divisor. Yeah, the divisor is the, you know, it's the number that's on the outside of a division problem. But you know what, Mr. Wara? The divisor is simply the number that is deciding the size of groups that you're going to have or maybe the number of groups. It depends. In this case, we have three students. So I'm going to draw that line all the way over here. And what does it say? I'm supposed to underline it? Okay. I'm still going to draw my little arrow just because I want to have some fun. Yeah, underline. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now, use a drawing. Divide 2 divided by 3. Okay. Well, step 1 says draw lines to divide each piece of paper into three equal pieces. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we have two pieces of construction paper, remember? And we're dividing it equally, remember? Yeah, okay. Let's see if I can pull this off here. In three equal pieces, ooh, I like. <laughs> ooh, it's all wiggly. And then we're gonna do two over here, right? Because we have to do three equal pieces. Now, I'm not gonna leave them like that. Come on, let's fix these up a little bit. There we go, much better. It looks professional. Mr. War is a perfectionist. Okay, <laughs> okay, I like it. So it says each student's share of one sheet of construction paper is, yeah, it's going to be one third. Because we have two papers divided by three people. So each student's share of one sheet of construction paper is one third. There we go. Now, step two says, count the number of thirds each student will get. Since there are two sheets of construction paper, each student will get two of the, and we'll say of the thirds, okay? 
there'll be two of the thirds because they're getting one third each. Or we can just think of this as putting or one third and then maybe S for sheet. So you know, or two times one third. All means the same thing. All right, complete the number sentence. So two divided by three is two thirds. Isn't this easy? The two sheets of paper divided by three. We end up with the answer is two thirds. Check your answer. Well, it says that we can take the quotient, which we know now since the, that's our answer to a division problem, we can put two thirds here. If we multiply that by, remember, the divisor, that was three, okay? And we multiply now, what well, we're gonna get, well, two times three, let's just rewrite it up here. Two over three times three is the same as two times three, remember, over three, which is equal to six over three. And that's six over three, six divided by three is equal to two. Was our dividend two? It was. So the quotient is correct. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now we have, so each student will get, again, this is still the same, two thirds of a sheet of construction paper. And let's look at our mathematical practice here. It says, describe. Describe a division problem where each student gets three quarters of a sheet of construction paper. Oh, I just have to kind of think of a problem. Okay, well, I'm gonna do some math talk. I'm not going to write this part down, but I'm just going to state it. Like I'm talking to an imaginary person over here. Hey, George, how's it going, George? I'm pretty good there, Mr. War, how you doing? I'm not complaining, that's for sure. I'm going to think of a problem that I would say might be, maybe I have three sheets of construction paper. Can I use the same one? They're shared equally with four students, or three divided by four. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, my friends. My goodness, could this get any easier? It's time. Page master. And then we have page two. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. What do we have here? Example. Four friends share six sheets of poster board equally. How many sheets of poster board does each friend get? Now, remember, we're going to divide six divided by four because six is the number of sheets of poster board we have, and that becomes the dividend. We're dividing by four because it says that four friends are going to share that amount. So that becomes our divisor. Now it says to draw lines. Sorry, step one says to draw lines to divide each of the six sheets into fourths. Well, I think the easiest way to do fourths come right down the middle, right? So there we go. I've divided my six sheets into fourths. Each friend's share of one sheet is going to be one fourth. Okay, step two says count the number of fourths each friend gets. Since there are six sheets of poster board, each friend will get six of the fourths, or we could say that that's six fourths. Step three, complete the number sentence. Write the fraction as a mixed number in simplest form. So I have six divided by four, which we already learned. That's just six over four. Or in this case, we're gonna have one and two fourths but one and two fourths, two fourths is equal to one half. So we can just go ahead and put that as one half. So in simplest form, one and one half. Cool, step four says since, yeah, since we had the six fourths times the four people, right? Students times four is going to equal six sheets of paper. Now, if we do the math here, six over four, see, times four is equal to it's equal to 24 over four, which is equal to six. Yes, can you feel it? Oh yes, I can. I like this math. So each friend will get, you guessed it, one, we will put six fours, I guess, or one and one half sheets of poster board. Woohoo! yeah, yeah. And here we have mathematical practices. It says for math talk, hey, George, you still there? Oh, I am. Okay, describe a different way the sheets of poster board could have been divided into four equal shares. That's a good question. Ah, uh, let me think this one over here. Um, well, I suppose each friend would get maybe one whole sheet and the remaining two sheets would be divided into halves. You know, each friend would get that one sheet and half of another sheet because that's what our answer turned out to be anyway. 
is one and a half. So we could have just phrased it a little bit differently. Good math talk question. Here we have Miss Ruiz has a piece of string that is 125 inches long. Wow. For a science experiment, she divides the string equally among eight groups of students. How much string will each group get? Now you can represent this problem as a division equation or a fraction. Okay, it says divide. Write the remainder as a fraction. 125 divided by eight. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say, first of all, this could be written as, uh, in this case, 125 over eight. But that's what we need to figure out, what is that amount? So I'm gonna take my 125, I'm gonna divide by eight, so let me see how many times eight will go into one. Eight will not go into one. That's not gonna happen, okay? So we are going to see is how many times will eight go into 12. Now that will happen, and that is gonna go in there one time. So we're gonna say that we're gonna take the eight times one, which is eight, we're gonna subtract and get four. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring down my five, and that's 40, and leaves us with five left over. So this is how we would write this then as a mixed number. We have 15 as our whole number because we know the quotient was at least 15. But we also had, we had five left over and then look at what our divisor was, right? We were looking for those size groups to see how many groups we could get in this case. So five over eight. Cool. Oh, Mr. War, you did it again. <laughs> I said divide, write the remainder as a fraction. Okay, I did do that. Then it says write 125 as a mixed number in simplest form. Okay, but we already did that, didn't we? See, I'm confused. I'm not trying to go ahead with the directions, but I guess I did again, because that's gonna be the same answer. So I'm trying to figure out what's the difference. That's what I think it is. Anyway, so each will, I mean, the answer is correct. Uh, so, e so each group will get the same number. They're 15 and five eighths. We could check our work here. Why don't we just go ahead and do that uh, real quick? So we take our quotient, which was 15, right? We're gonna multiply that by the divisor. And 50 times 8, that's one of those really nice ones. Shows up on one of my scary pages. So we have 40. So that's going to be 40. Carry the 4. That's going to be 8. So we have 120. Okay. Then I need to add the remainder. Okay. The remainder was 5. And look at that. We get 125. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, time to see, do we have anything else down? Oh, we do have something else down below. Yes, we do. We have something else down below here. It says Mathematical Practice 1. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at Mathematical Practice 1. So Mathematical Practice 1 says, hey, let's make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. When presented with a problem, I can make a plan, carry out my plan. Hey, and I can evaluate its success. Very good. Before, I need to explain the problem to myself. You know, have I solved a problem like this before? I like that. Organize my information. We've done that in some of these problem solving videos where we figure out what to, what am I being asked to find? What information am I going to use? All that kind of stuff makes a difference. And of course, during it, you're going to persevere. That's right, monitor my work, change my plan if I need to, ask myself, hey, does this make sense? And of course, after, and that's what we just did in, in persevering in this particular problem was, hey, did my answer, was it correct? Was I able to check my work? Why do I think it may not have worked? Hmm? There you go, goodbye. Yes, I love these mathematical practices and there's only eight of them. It makes them even more special. Anyway, Evaluate now, it says explain why 125 divided by eight gives the same result as 125 eighths, because it's written as a fraction. Hmm, that is an awesome, awesome question, but it's super easy. We covered it right in the beginning of the video, but you see both 125 divided by eight, and the first thing, it showed in this particular problem that it was 125 inches long. So it represents that 125 inches of string and it's being divided equally among eight groups. That's what the problem said. Well, when you look at 125 divided by eight and then you look at the 125 eighths, they're equivalent expressions for division, which is what we already talked about. So let me go ahead and put those notes down. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, there you go, my friends. Yes, oh, you hear that bumper music in the background? No, yes. No, yes, no, yes. Hey, Mr. Wara, it is time. You know this math video must come to an end. It's better that you learn to accept rather than deny. <laughs> I don't know where that voice came from. I guess it's my inner voice. Nonetheless, my friends, 
the voice inside my head is correct, it is time to say, Hasta la vista. Ah, it's time to say, Live long and prosper, my friends.